An important element of the British Rail safety policy is the fitting of train data recorders to locomotives, high-speed trains and multiple units. The train data recorder, in its basic form, is capable of monitoring and recording all operational functions on board the train or locomotive. It has been recognised that the recording of such data can enable operating incidents to be investigated more effectively, performance of both drivers and traction units to be monitored, and safety-related events to be identified and recorded for later investigation. The development of sophisticated solid-state electronic data recorders, interfacing with desktop computers and data transmission systems, has transformed the train data recorder into an important tool for railway operators. At British Rail we have already fitted several hundred vehicles and such equipment is specified for all new builds. So far the application has been to our multiple unit fleets in Network South East, although high speed trains are now being fitted as part of a pilot scheme for a national specification for data recorders and in conjunction with the implementation of automatic train protection. Let's begin by looking at some examples of train data recorded by the equipment. First we have the unit or locomotive number and the date and time of the recording. In the future it is intended to enter the driver's identity and train running number into the system when the driver prepares or takes over the train. During the journey analog inputs enable the train data recorder to record the train speed, distance travelled, brake cylinder pressure and where applicable the brake pipe pressure. A wide range of digital inputs provide recorded data on the operation of equipment. For example, the selected position of the direction switch, traction power selected, the indication given by the AWS train equipment as well as the driver's response to an AWS warning horn, the sounding of the vigilance warning device, and the operation of the driver's safety device. The position of the brake controller. The operation of the door release circuits. The operation of the door close circuits. The operation of the passenger communication alarm. And the selection of an emergency brake application. In addition, the status of other on-train equipment is recorded, including the brake continuity wire, and wheel slide protection equipment activity, the traction interlock circuit, the door interlock circuit, and the isolation of any of the safety systems. As we've already seen, train data recorders also play an important role in the automatic train protection system being piloted on the Great Western Main and Chiltern Line. In this application, the equipment will record such additional data as the signal number and aspect exhibited, the gradient profile, distances to target and to next beacon, current and target speeds, and finally, warning and intervention by ATP equipment. We can see that, when applied to ATP, the train data recorder receives a wide range of trackside signalling, speed and distance data transmitted by the beacons, as well as conventional data. Train data recorders in current use on British Rail today record into solid state memory. The recording is triggered by train movement or changes in analog or digital signals. There are basically two groups of memory. The first is the running memory which retains at least the last eight hours worth of data. This area of memory may be further subdivided into long-term data and short-term data. The short-term data may only contain the preceding 30 minutes, but will provide more detail than the long-term data. However, even the long-term data will not miss any changes in digital signals. This data will enable us to pinpoint equipment behavior and driver action to intervals of one second or less. The second is the special events memory, which is activated by safety related events such as emergency brake applications, isolation of safety systems, and where employed in conjunction with ATP, intervention by the ATP system caused by the passing of signals at danger 
or excessive speed. The special events memory will store all data recorded at the time of the event for a minimum period of 14 days. Other features are available to allow mileage run to be accumulated and for statistics to be gained on the number of operations of certain equipment. This information may be used by the engineers for maintenance. When data is required for analysis, it is transferred from the train data recorder directly to a portable personal computer or to a purpose-built transfer unit for downloading to a standard floppy disk. Alternatively, the complete train data recorder may be removed from the train. Future systems currently under evaluation extend the range of data transfer and include downloading to smart card or data cassette. Eventually, it is planned to link the train data recorder to a radio system to trigger an alert to operations control following a safety-related event. Development is also underway for automatic transfer of data by radio or other means, such as loops, similar to those used for automatic train protection. Data may only be extracted from the train data recorder by suitably trained and qualified staff. The extraction and analysis of data is required following operating incidents or irregularities in which the train is involved. Additionally, data is extracted by the train crew leader or traction inspector for the purpose of individual driver performance assessment. The analysis of the recorded data is subject to strict control and is only undertaken by trained and qualified staff. Let's take a look at examples of data analysis. In the first example, the investigation follows a report that a power-operated door was open when the train was in motion. We know from the report that this took place at around about 06.20 in the morning, so we can quickly locate this area on the overview. We then proceed to select the area at roughly around 6 o'clock in the morning in order to home in on the actual 06.20 time of the incident. We can see at the bottom here we have a four minute interval scale and we have the time of 06.16 here, 06.20, 06.24. So we can now zoom in into this area only to avoid analysing data that uh, we do not wish to look at. We now have a 20 second interval at the bottom uh, and we can see the time of 06, 17, 18, 19, 06, 20. So we now select that as being the data to evaluate. The next stage is to select the signals that we wish to look at on the graphical screen. And then we select and confirm the time range that we wish to look at. And we have the time range memorized from our previous journey overview of 6.16 to 6.22. The computer will now draw a graph to show us the events that took place in that time frame. We can see from the red line on the screen, this being the speed, that this train was being braked slowly down to a stand and at this point here, the train is actually at a stop. We know this to be the point at which the train was in the station, and we can then look at the other inputs coming in, which are the green and blue lines here, to see the events that occurred. We have an amount of braking by the driver for this particular station stop, and we can see that the door release on the left-hand side, which is this blue line, was given at this point here. In order to see the sequence of events, we will now expand this area into more detail. Having enlarged this particular area, we can actually see that the door release on the left-hand side was given by the train crew before the train had actually come to the stand which was at this point here. And from the time scale of four seconds for each interval on the scale, we can see that this is approximately 10 seconds before the train came to a stand, the speed being somewhere um, below 10 miles per hour. 
we can now move over to tabular data in order to get the exact time, speed and events as they occurred in a one second by one second interval. Here we have the time and the distance travelled, the speed of the train and the brake cylinder pressure plus the varying inputs from other traction controls. We will be looking for the door release which is denoted by the letter D and this should come up on the screen shortly. Progressing through the data, we find the door release is put on by train crew at this point, which is in effect 06-1953, with a distance covered of three miles from the previous stop, the speed being 5.73 miles per hour. So we can confirm that a release was given by train crew while the train was still moving it can only be assumed that a passenger actually pressed a door open button while the train was still moving for the door to actually be open. In the second example, analysis follows an incident in which a signal was passed at danger. However, the driver reported that the signal was exhibiting a proceed aspect on approach, but was replaced to danger in front of the train. Now we can see the red line here indicates the speed of the train with the scale of 0 to 100 miles per hour. The yellow line represents the brake cylinder pressure and the green and blue lines represent the other inputs coming from the train controls. In this particular instance we are looking for the point at which the driver applied the emergency brake which we can see here on this blue line at this point, followed by a full brake application of the brake cylinder. The speed is then seen to drop down to zero where the train comes to a stand. Immediately prior to the emergency brake being applied, we can see a succession of AWS bell indications. And we can see the immediate previous indication is a bell indication, which would confirm what the driver is saying is that he received a clear signal and a danger aspect was put back against him having gone over the AWS magnet. We can now look at this in a little bit more detail to look at the way the events occurred in that last minute or so. Here we can see we have three second intervals on the bottom scale and we can see the AWS bell signal received in the cab at this point followed some three seconds or so later by an emergency brake application, which is at this point here, the blue line. The other signals will just show us the status of, others, of other signals on the train, such as power and brakes. The train is seen to come to a stand after approximately 30 seconds, and if we switch over to a tabular output, then we can get the exact data in terms of precise speeds, precise time and precise distances covered. We can clearly see that the train data recorder is an invaluable tool in the operation of a modern railway. It assists in the speedy and accurate investigation of technical problems on our trains. It provides accurate monitoring of the driver function, helping us to improve both training and standards of train handling. Finally, and most importantly, it provides the means to improve the safety of our operations by detailed and accurate analysis of incidents. British Rail is currently evaluating train data recorders supplied by three highly respected manufacturers. Once evaluation is completed, we shall draw up a national specification for incorporation into all newly built rolling stock and for a program of retrospective installation in existing stock.